Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, a holistic integrative uh, psychiatric facility where we emphasize treating people and not uh, not diagnoses. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and uh, today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my right would be Alec Colley. And you are a physician assistant student from Chatham University. And on my left. I am Ashley Barone. I am an art therapy intern from Seton Hall University. And we're so happy that everyone's joined us today. As uh, always, what we try to do is put out some type of uh, useful information that you can incorporate in your life, not merely, not merely words. Okay? As we've often said, Ashley, everyone's in recovery from something. Mm -hmm. And Alec, the recovery work, again, does not take, take place inside these walls. The recovery work takes place out there okay when you're dealing with real life as it happens it's easy to be nice and safe and say the right words in here is it not mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult when we when we go outside and deal with real life situations however by participating in therapy by participating in groups particularly you can experience and try out new behaviors in a safe environment Right. So I guess we're kind of in the new year, are we not, Alec? We are. Right, right. And in the new year, uh, Ashley, many people make what right, on New Year's? Typically resolutions. Right, right. Do you ever make resolutions, Alec? Yeah. What are, what are some typical resolutions that people make? You know, go to the gym more, eat better, mm -hmm. exercise. Right, right. What have some of your uh, resolutions been? Uh, around the same thing. Eat more healthy don't procrastinate, mm. do more adventures in my life. Right, right. So so many, so when, remember, Alec, uh, when we make resolutions, we, we set ourselves up with definitive expectations, do we not? Okay. Like many people make resolutions, like I'm going to make a million dollars, I'm going to retire before I'm 30, I'm going to lose 150 pounds, I'm going to learn Chinese, uh, things like that that set themselves up for disappointment. So what we're going to suggest is one of the best resolutions I've ever made was not to make any more resolutions. So the what we prefer to do is make intentions. And what we're going to introduce today is an intention to of to purify today pure purify today not necessarily your body but necessarily but we're talking about our mind and some of the toxicity of negative thinking that we've we've built up so are you familiar with streams water yeah. well yeah water and streams and rivers right Ashley so a, a stream has the uh, capability of purifying itself every seven miles Okay, simply by going over the rocks, the oxygenation uh, that that goes out, goes through it. Okay, so and we can do the we can do the same thing with ourselves. And quite often, our our minds are often polluted, are they not? So what are, what do our minds get polluted with, Ashley? Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. So many people with with anxiety and depression are by negative thoughts, Alec. So one time, sometimes I consider people having a loaded gun, but the gun's loaded with negative thoughts. And you continually shoot yourself. Okay, so what we're talking about here is making a conscious choice. Making a conscious choice. Here at Seclair, we do not we do not ask people to repress thoughts. We do not ask people to block thoughts. We ask people to embrace thoughts and recognize them. And recognize them. I was talking to you this morning about uh, your brain being an email box. Did I not? Yeah. Okay. Can you recall that discussion at all? Uh, so essentially. When you're scrolling through your email, uh, you're able to properly identify what's junk email versus something you'd actually like to pay attention to. But when it comes to our thoughts, we're not as easily able to do that. Um, a negative thought will come in instead of just dismissing it as you would junk email. Uh, you have to open it up and dig deeper into it. and, and um, you kind of, by doing that, embrace the thought and make it more of a reality than it has to be. Well spoken. Well spoken, Mr. Alex. And uh, Ashley, so when we, would negative thoughts, let's, let's compare it to nutrition to your body, okay? Would negative thoughts be health food? No. Would resentments be health food? No. Okay. So are you holding on to resentments today? Are you holding on to negative thoughts, Ashley? There are probably a few in there. Mm -hmm. How about you, Alec? Yeah, certainly. So what these resentments and what these negative thoughts are, they're, they're like poison. 
they truly, they really and truly, they poison our mind, and they and they hold us down. They they're 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 like rocks. They're like anchors that basically hold us in the past. So when we have resentments and we have negative thoughts, they're mainly about past occurrences, are they not? And we continue to hold them. We continue to bring that pain of the past into the present, and we continue to to medicate ourselves with poison. Mm -hmm. So how do we? What do we do about this at uh, at Seclair? What do we do, Ashley? Um, one of the things we do is talk about radical acceptance. Talk about radical acceptance. Um, so radical acceptance is, although you might not like what is going on in your life, uh, you accept that fact and able to move on. Right. So and until we're able to identify and label something, not necessarily that you approve of it, Mm -hmm. And not necessarily that it's the way it's always going to be. However, this is the way it is. So the first thing I would suggest that you do out there is take the resentments that you have in your head that continue to bounce around and ruminate and poison you. Take them out of your head and write them down on paper. Uh, let's not let's not go the computer route. Let's not go the word processor. I want you to actually put a pencil or a pen in your hand and write these things out on on paper and put them put them there. Recognize them. Read them. Recognize that this is what's in you. This is what's part of you. And you can make a conscious choice as to whether or not you want that particular thought in your head or not. And and learn how to learn how to dismiss it. So by Taking, making conscious choice, remember there's no obligation for you to keep those thoughts in your head, is there, Alan? There's not. No, so, but until we're aware of that, until we make that choice, we can't do it. Okay? So one of the best things to do for people, places, things, situations, or events that we have resentments against is to, what would you suggest, Ashley? Um, if they have a resentment towards someone? If you have, you're carrying the resentments. What, 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 what do we say? What would you suggest to people to deal with them? What do we do? Um, a lot of the time, we talk about kind of again, like going with that choice. So giving that choice of maybe you have that resentment, but letting it go, and kind of letting it be in the past and not ruminate on something that maybe happened and kind of look forward and mm -hmm. stay in the moment. Absolutely. Staying in the moment so very important. So Alex, is there someone in your life that has done something to you in the past that perhaps you still think about occasionally? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. And sometimes we hold that resist, the resentment. So I'm going to ask you, would you kick a sick friend? Mm -mm. Would you kick a sick friend? So sometimes some of the people, some of the things that are done to us are done by people that perhaps didn't mean it or or were ill or were, or, or were sick people. So would we kick a sick friend? So one of the best things that we can do in order to purify ourselves and to go down that stream seven miles is to wish others well. We wish others well. We, 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 we if you're, if you're the spirituality, we pray for them. We ask, we ask them blessings. And I know we've talked about this before, but it does bear repeating. Uh, some of the Jewish rabbis have a, have a thought about a hundred blessings a day. And it's if it's easy to bless friends, isn't it? It's easy to bless nice people. It's a little harder to bless people that perhaps have irritated us or wronged us in some way, is it not? Yeah. However, by by blessing them and wishing them sincerely, wishing them well, even though at first it's going to come out through gritted teeth, you can take you can take that animosity and resentment and bitterness out of your heart and put it somewhere else. Remember. What just said is it said resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies, the other person gets sick when it's making us sick. So the way to purify that number one is to get it out of your heart. So when we have resentments, our hearts filled with darkness, isn't it? Do you ever feel sometimes like that? Our hearts are filled with darkness when we when we have anger, or depression, or resentment, anxiety. Our hearts are filled with darkness. So Ashley, when it's dark, what 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 dispels darkness? Light. The light. So the light would be the blessings. The light would be wishing others well. The light would be praying for them. And this is this is an action, not just a not just a thinking. This is an action. You actually write these things down and you wish others well. You pray for them. You give them blessings. And I would say I would here's, I would suggest that you possibly do that. If you can give try to try the hundred blessings a day. 
It, it, it certainly gives you a different perspective on life. It, it unburdens your soul. It shines the light into the darkness. And my hope is that everyone out there gets extra batteries and that, that takes them recharging. And we'll talk a little bit about recharging in some uh, future episodes. So <clears throat> as always, we're going to end with a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait. Your assignment, as always, is to do a kindness for another smile at that cashier. Tell, tell them what a good job they're doing uh, and be kind to yourself most of all. Until then, namaste.